us pray. Father, we thank you for all that you have done in our lives and what you continue to do in our lives. And I pray that as we now are about to listen to your words, that you'll open our hearts to your words and help us, Lord, to hear not just with our ears, but with our hearts. Bless your words now in the hearts of your people, I pray. And let it be a time of empowerment, upliftment, and enrichment. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, this week we continue our dialogue under the month's theme, Increasing in Impact Through the Word. You will also want to bear in mind that our Impact 23 calls us to increase in maturity, power, and authority in Christ for transformation. And one of the objectives to accomplish this goal is of this goal of our Impact 2023 is to increase in knowledge of the Word and also to adhere to the Word of God. In my sermon last week, I emphasized the importance of the church valuing the Word of God. And of course, what that could mean really is that as we value God's word more and more, the believer absorb the word of God and become more and more what the word of God dictates our lives should be. What you really want is that when you look at your life in the mirror of the word, you are seeing the word of God actually living out in your life. So, you want to absorb more and more of the word, not just intellectually, but experientially. You want to experience the word of God. So I want us to move away as a church from just coming to church. And I know I said this last week, and I might sound like a scratch record, but I want us to just move away from coming to church just to sit and listen to me or to whoever else is preaching or just to be a part of the ritual or the experience but to actually design in your life that I want to grow, I want to change, I want to be transformed, I want my life to re reflect more and more the fullness, the statue of Jesus Christ in my life. And all of us, including the young and the old, everybody, I want us to launch a campaign mentally to say, I am going to be more and more like my Lord. I want the beauty of Jesus to be seen in me. Amen, church. I want us to pursue that with all of our vigor and vitality. I want to be like Jesus. So the importance of, you know, the word and valuing the word is critical towards this goal. The gospel, the gospels rather, records an interesting parable that I want for us to briefly reflect on this morning. It's found in Luke chapter 8, but it's also in other gospels as well. Find for me Luke chapter 8, verses 14 to 15 or rather verses uh, 4 to 8 in the meanwhile. And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rocks, and as soon as it, is, it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, 
and yielded a crop of a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Verses 14 and 15. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. For those who are interested in context, the parable is found in Matthew 13 and Mark 4, I believe. Now, I believe that at the core of this parable, told by our Lord, is the importance of the word of God in the life of the believer. So I want everybody to, everybody to say, the word of God, say it with strength, the word of God is important in my life. Now preach to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the word of God is important in your life. Jesus ended his parable by calling out, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. The term called out denotes that Jesus was making a major point of his short discourse. Jesus used, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And we see this used by Jesus on different occasions when telling parables. You could find that maybe in Matthew chapter 11, verse 15, 13, um, 9, and 43, Mark 4, verse 9, and verse 23, and so on. And it is used some eight times, I believe, in the book of Revelation in some way. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. You know, this statement, this is something that I knew before I even started reading the Bible. Because as a child growing up, it is one of the things that you would hear from the adults, my aunts, my mother, when they're about to strike. Him who have ears to hear, make him hear. And once you hear that, you know that the next thing that you are going to be experiencing is a good warming. So it comes as a warning. The expression, however, describes the fact that spiritual people can discern the intended spiritual meanings of a parable. The implication is that unspiritual people would understand no more than the parable's surface meaning. So what is this parable about? The Lord explained the parable to his disciples. The seed is the word of God. Everybody say, the word of God. The word which was being preached by the living word, Jesus, the people's responsibility was to accept the message. He was preaching the word. The word was being given, but their responsibility, like it is yours, is to accept the word in your hearts. Jesus posited four kinds of hearers, which are represented by four soils. All four kinds receive the same news, the same message. The first group consists of those who hear but do not believe at all because of the work of the devil. I hardly think that there is anyone in our midst today who would hear the word and you believe nothing about it. So I am going to press on. The second group is those who listen and rejoice, but, when, but then do not stick with the truth 
of the message, for they have no root. The fact that they believe for, what, for a while but fall away means that they only accept the fact of the word mentally and then reject it when the going gets rough. And this is why it is important, as I said in my sermon last week, for the word of God not only to be heard with our ears, but we are to hear it in our hearts. We have to open our hearts to hear God's word in our hearts, or else it will only pass over our heads, and by the time we go through the doors, we will forget everything that was said because it has no place in our hearts. We have to open our hearts to hear God's word. You know, sometimes you find that the older you get is the more you are forgetting things. I don't know, is that dementia nurse? But you are not remembering things. Well, I have not been remembering things for a long time, so I don't know if it has anything to do with my age. But sometimes you take for granted that you are going to remember things. So yes, somebody will call me and say to me, oh, Pastor Hedlam, remember to take so-and-so for me when you are coming. I say yes. And then is when I reach a church and saw the person, then I'm saying, oh my God, I didn't remember. No, as a pastor, I don't like to feel inefficient because always telling people, oh, I forget, and then you're going to make some grand excuse is not professional. It is not acceptable. So I have strategized. Once you say to me, remember to bring so-and-so for me, I get up from where I am, find it, and put it where my car key is because I'm not, I'm not gonna leave the car. I'm not so forgetful to forget the car yet. So as long as I'm picking up the key, I'm picking up this other package because I want to remember. I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, that if you want to remember God's word, you have to strategize. You can't do things the same way. You have to begin to say, well, every Sunday I go to church and the message is preached and I'm not remembering it. I need a new strategy. Are you with me, church? I have to write it down in a book or I have to take out my smartphone and find notes and make my notes on my phone. Or I have to put my recorder on and record the sermon. But I am going to make every effort not to be that kind of soil that the word when it is preached and spoken, it finds no root in my heart. Are you with me, church? So you have to make an effort to remember. Everybody say, make an effort to remember. I want to spend a little more time, if I have it, on the other two categories. The third group of seeds fell in a part of the field where the thorns and shrubs had been imperfectly cleared away and was not destroyed. They grew with the grain, crowded it, shaded it, exhausted the earth, and choked it. Now, my brothers and sisters, when you think about it, you know, I know a little farming, as much as some of you might not want to believe me. I know a little farming. And when you are farming, one of the things that you have to do is prepare the soil. And there are some crops where the preparation of the soil requires greater intensity than others. Because if you plant the yam in a stony, stony ground, the yam will grow but it's going to be crooked. And you want your yam to be smooth. You ever go to, this, to, the, to, to, the, to the market and they have some carrot looking all crooked and bent and horrible? 
a lot of that has to do with the soil in which it was planted. But even worse than that is if you don't remove some of the weeds from the ground, then it will overpower the crops that you have put in the ground and instead of you reaping carrots or, or cucumber or whatever it is you are reaping, it is only pure grass. And you will look at the field and you say, why aren't my carrots growing? Where are my cucumbers? Where are my turnips? Where is my, my whatever it is? And you begin to blame the ground. But sometimes it's that the ground that is to be blamed is you the one who did not prepare the soil for the sowing. I am making the point that even when you are coming to this moment of the word, you have to prepare your hearts. You have to take away the things that are distracting you. You have to take away the things that want to choke the word in your hearts. And you have to say, I will hide your words in my heart. Sometimes even the very people who you sit down beside in church, you have to change your address in church. Because some people never ready to talk to you until you open the Bible. As soon as you open the Bible, them start to elbow you. And what them talking to you about have nothing to do with the sermon. They may ask you, um, you didn't get the text from, from, from so and so. It's the time some of them want to find out you're going to vote to accept the government offer. Because it is time the word and the enemy of your soul wants to steal the word from your heart. You have to sometimes tell the people, shut up, I'm listening to the word of God. And sometimes, let me tell you this also, you can have some legitimate reason to get out of the word moment. You can say, oh, I must go and do this now. And it is legitimate. But be careful of the enemy's devices to get you away from the most important part of why you come to church. You have come to the house of God to hear the word of God. You have come to the house of God to listen to the word of God. You have come to the house of God to feed on the word of God, not for something else. And so when you go outside and you face the vicissitudes of life, you don't know what the word said because you weren't listening. You, don't need, you didn't know that God was addressing that in, your, in the service on Sunday because you weren't listening. You didn't know that God was preparing you to meet upon some situations that's going to happen tomorrow or the day after or the day after because you are not listening to what God is saying. You are not appropriating to what God is saying. You are simply doing your own thing when God, God, God is trying to warn you about something that's going to happen in your life tomorrow. Hallelujah. 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 For the Hebrews, the, the reading of the word, the, the ministry of the word was the most important part of their liturgy. It was not the singing, it was not the dancing. And I know the praise and worship is nice. And I know the music ministry is nice. God knows I don't like a thank you, thank you music ministry in the church. But I want to put it to the church this morning that the greatest part of the church is not the music ministry. It is not the dance ministry. It is the preaching ministry of the church. 
of the only thing that has been designed to transform the church, to cause the church to experience transformation. It is the preaching ministry. And so many of us have allowed the enemy to make us feel like there are other important things. And I want to set it right in your minds. Whatever you are doing when you come to church, drop it and listen to the word. Wherever you find yourself, get out of that place and listen to God's word. Open your heart to God's word and see God working in your midst and transforming you as you open your heart to his words. Lift your hands and praise him if you will. Yes, that third group indeed represents those who listen but never come to maturity. These may be those who are interested in Jesus' message but struggle to completely accept it because of their devotion to material things, life's worries, riches, and pleasure. And so the church has to recognize that there are those things that are competing for our loyalty. And many times, I don't know if you're like me, but many times when I'm trying to study, when I'm trying to read the word, that's when some of you decide to call me. And you should ask me, so pastor, how do I know that's what you're doing? But sometimes your phone is sitting down there quiet. Talk to me now. Not ringing. Sometimes you have to take it up on one that say, it turn on. And as soon as you decide, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about my trouble. That's when the phone begins to ring. Get me, understand me church. You can ignore it. You can call back. But don't abandon your time with God because of a telephone call. Stay with God because that is more important at all times. So yes, many people struggle because of the tension between how do I commit to God? How do I commit to God and abandon this thing that I love, the hedonistic lifestyle? The glee, the glamour, the excitement, the party, the whatever it is many of you find yourselves engaged in. How do I now commit myself to the discipline of God's word while at the same time, how do I abandon those things that my flesh enjoys? But I hear John saying in John 2, I'm thinking it's Second John or First John, First John 2, I hear John saying, do not love the world. Not the things in the world. Talk to me, church. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the will of God does what church of God? The world will pass away. Your riches will pass away. The things you go after will pass away. But he that does the will of God abides forever. Give the Lord a praise. Praise him one more time, church. Shout glory to God in the highest. Shout glory to the King of Kings. Glory to the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. The fourth group consists of those who listen to the word. Retain the word. Everybody say retain the word. And produced a crop. 
That is, they bear spiritual fruits, evidence of their spiritual life. Their hearts are changed, for they are noble and good. Go ahead and give the Lord a praise in his house. Hallelujah. The person called the good ground in the text are filled with the power and influence of God and therefore continues to bring forth fruit. They, per they persevere in righteousness. From this, we may learn that the perseverance of the saints as it is termed, is necessary and it implies they continue to bear fruit for the glory of God. Those who hear the word and retain it are those who even when they're going through their darkest moment are still giving praise to God. Hallelujah. It is those even when they have no money, they are still honoring God. It is those when their body are rock with sickness, they're saying, though he slay me. <laughs> Glory to God. Because they have nothing else in them but the word. I tell you, brothers and sisters, when you squeeze an orange, the only thing you can get out of it is what? Talk to me. Orange juice. When you squeeze a grapefruit, what do you get? Grapefruit juice. When you squeeze a Christian, when you press a Christian, when you press them against their situation, the only thing that you should get from a Christian is the word of God. Because they're filled with the word of God. The word of God is coming through their mouths. It's coming through their eyes. It's coming through their ears. And somebody say, what happened to you? I'm filled with the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 Because that is what you, fit, you, you have in you. The word of God. Christians shouldn't find themselves cursing God. Shouldn't find themselves complaining all the time. Miserable all the time. Fearful all the time. Doubtful all the time. The reason why you are in that situation is because you do not have the word of God inside of you. When you have the word of God inside of you, it empowers you to go through your different and difficult circumstances. Some of you, when you go to doctor and the doctor calls some big name, something that you have, some diverticulitis, something um, elephantitis or something and you go home and you tell everybody the doctor said I have this and the doctor said I have that but then you can't even remember what the word of God says in Psalm 23 when it says though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil because thou art with me thy rod and thy star the company you can't even remember that the Bible says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You can't even remember that the Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? But you can remember what the doctor say. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want a church that is filled with the word of God. I want a people that knows and lives the word of God. Everybody lift up your hand and say, the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I'm not saying you're not to remember if doctor says you have something. 
But when you say what the doctor says, say what the word says too. The doctor says, I have this. But the word says, by your stripes, I am healed. The doctor says, I have this. But the word says that he was wounded for my transgression. Hallelujah. Oh, the lawyer says this, but the word of God says that he is my deliverer. Oh, the news is saying this, but the word of God says that they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. They shall not be moved, but abide forever. Hallelujah! You know what the word says and you know what others are saying but you trust God's word because it is reliable. Hallelujah. 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 I can't tell you how many times I hear some stuff on the news. I hear the minister of finance or whoever gives their budget and all the technocrats and all the know everything come out and they're giving their analysis of it sometimes and it seems so hopeless. But I hear my heart saying that they that trust in the Lord. Glory to God. I hear my heart saying they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. I hear my heart saying my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth lift your hands and praise him hallelujah hallelujah I want the church to understand that you have to confess it the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God it is not only when I preach it but it's also when you speak it out of your mouth in your situation faith rises in your situation when you speak it over your finances speak it over your health speak it over your families speak it over your jobs speak it to your adversaries Speak it in your situation. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So I end by saying to you what James says in James 1 verse 21. Get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you humbly accept the word planted in you which can do what save you Jesus said that you are clean through the words which I have spoken to you the word is already given in your hearts open your hearts and receive it and be clean through the words which is planted in your hearts. Glory to God. Stand and let us close the service. Can you give me that song again? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. As we bring the service to its close, I want to issue an invitation to those who have never found Christ as your Lord and Savior, please step forward and receive him today in your hearts. It's a good day for you to give your life to Jesus. Do it today. And for those of you who, who you may say, I, I'm not, my heart is not open to the word, I want you to ask the Lord to open your hearts so that it can be filled with his word let us take that song one or two times then we are going to pray come now please if you're coming
thy words. Everybody sing it out. Come on, church, sing it. Sing it as a confession. And a light unto my path. Yes, when I feel afraid. When I feel afraid. Think of God's Sing it out, say thy words. Is there somebody who is coming? Is there an unsaved today who will say, I want Jesus in my heart? Will you step forward now? Oh, yes. I will not forget. I will not forget your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side. Everybody say Let us all pray. Everybody lift up your voices and prayers. Let us pray and ask the Lord to open our hearts to his words. Let his word fill us. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Come on, everybody, lift up your voices in prayer. Father, we give you thanks today for your words. Thank you, God, that you have heard us all the time and you continue to hear us. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us of the, po the potency of your word, that your word is living, your word is powerful, that your word is transformational. Lord, so many times we find ourselves in situations where the enemy wants to show doubt in our hearts. But Lord, we understand that the entrance of your words is light and it gives understanding to the simple. And so I pray, Lord, that your word will fill our hearts, O oh God. The word of God will live in us. The word of God will come to us in a mighty way, Lord. And revelation, Lord, will come to us and we will experience you in our lives, O oh God. And so, Lord, I pray that your word, oh God, the word will empower us. The word will embolden us. The word will take a root in our hearts, oh God, and will flourish and grow like a mighty tree that bears fruit and bring forth yield its fruit in season and out of season. Oh Lord, open our appetite to your words, I pray. And let more and more, God, our hearts love you, love your word, our hearts desire more and more of your words, O oh God. For this is our desire, Lord. This is my desire, O oh God. Let it be all of our desires, Lord, to be filled more and more with your word in our hearts. Hallelujah. 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 Thy word.